Well, this Python tutorial for absolute beginners is all about arrays. The array is one of the most useful versatile elements in Python. As we'll see in a few minutes, you can really do lots with it. But before we get started with that, just a quick recap. This video assumes that you have completed Python tutorial one from Computational Physics for Absolute Beginners. In that tutorial, you learned about how to store numerical values in variables. So things like a equals seven, and you know that seven is now stored under the variable a, that you can then use to carry out computation. So things like a times a, a minus three, a divided by b, etc. cetera. Uh, you hopefully saw that using Python uh, is advantageous over using a calculator because when you go back to redo the computation, you only have to change a few things and your code is very nicely uh, reusable. We're going to expand on that concept in this video by going from standalone single variables to arrays that hold multiple numbers under a single name. So why might you be interested in using an array? Well, let's suppose you have lots of data that you're working with, you know, like 30 data points, right? 30 or more, yeah, I would consider to be a lot. Really anything more than a couple is probably worth having an array. Well, let's say, for example, you are uh, recording the heights of a class of first graders. If you just saw the, the first video, if that's all you had to go on, you might think that the best thing to do would be to give Beth an initial height, Dave an initial height, Dominique an initial height, et cetera, et cetera. That's gonna get very cumbersome very quickly, especially when you go from one school year to the next. Do you really have to change all these names? I mean, do you really need the name as part of the variable name from the student to, to then record just a number that's their height? I mean, what if you're not doing anything with that name information? What if all you need is just the set of numbers so that you can calculate an average and a standard deviation? Well, if that's the case, then the thing you want is an array. Arrays come from the NumPy library, numerical Python library. NumPy is one of your best friends as a person working in computational physics activities because NumPy has all sorts of mathematical functions that you will need in your activities. So you're gonna be using NumPy a lot if you're doing any sort of computational physics in Python, not just for arrays, but for other mathematical functions. So you're gonna be seeing this a lot. The way this import works, uh, you can just copy and paste this in here for now. You don't really need to be making your own import statements at this point in your education, I don't think. But the idea is that there is this library out there called NumPy. It lives out there on the internet. It's full of all these functions that you can use that you can just bring in and then Python knows what you're talking about. So NumPy is the name of the library. So it's not a default part of Python. Python itself is actually very bare bones because the design theory is that you will import all the stuff that you need and leave out the stuff that you don't need. So when we say import, we're saying Python, go on the internet, find the NumPy tutorial that you know about because it's, it's there, it's an established known quantity, and import that into this program. Now we need to be able to reference it. We need to be able to tell Python, I'm calling on something that's defined in the, uh, in the NumPy library. This is kind of like when you give a citation in a paper, you need to establish where it's coming from and so we're gonna import NumPy as NP. So NP is just an abbreviation for NumPy. So whenever you see this NP dot, the NP dot is telling Python, I want you to go to the Python library and look for the thing that comes after the dot. So for example, in line four here, we're calling on NP dot array, meaning there is a thing called array that lives in the NumPy library that we want to be able to use. Array is the function that creates arrays for us. There's lots of different ways to set up an array. We're just gonna set it up directly for this video. In the next tutorial, uh, Python tutorial three, uh, we're gonna take a look at how do you just set up an array and then fill in the numbers later. There is a way to do that. Check out Python tutorial three uh, if you're interested in that. But the basic way to set up an array is to literally just provide a list of numbers. So number, comma, number, comma, number, et cetera. This is a Python list. So the list itself goes in the square brackets and uh, that square brackets goes inside the, the curly parentheses or the curved parentheses. Um, it might seem a little redundant, but there's Pythonese reasons for doing that. Just know that, that this is 
the, the rounded parentheses are for saying what's going into the function, and then the, uh, the square brackets are there to say this is the set of elements that I want to go into the array. And so what we're doing here is taking this array, taking this whole set of numbers, and we're storing it under the name student heights. So student heights is not a number. It's, it's a variable like you saw before, but it's an entire set of numbers. So if you go to print the student heights, right? I've got student heights here inside the print function. It prints the entire thing. So underneath the name of student heights is this entire array, this entire set of values is stored under the one name, student height. So you don't need 30 different names, you just need the one name. And then if you want to reference a particular value, let's say you want to reference Sally's height, you just tell Python which index you want. The number in the square brackets here is called the index, meaning each uh, number inside the array gets an index. The index is the address. It's how many into the array is this element. Now this is where Python counting gets a little bit funny. Python, for, for various programming architecture stylistic reasons, uh, Python starts counting at zero. So this first one is not actually student heights one, that is student heights zero. And then the next one is student heights one, and then the next one is student heights two, et cetera, et cetera, on down the line. So when we ask for student heights of two, then we're looking at element two is 46, is the number zero, number one, number two item. If you've never worked in a programming language before, this probably seems strange. Basically, programming languages get divided up into two camps, those who start counting at zero and those who start counting at one. It's a little bit strange. Even I, after years of working with Python, sometimes forget to start counting at zero. It's just something you get used to. And if you make a mistake, you can fix it, right? So for example, here we go, zero, one, two. You could change that to another number. Let's suppose I wanted to get uh, item number five. I could run this cell again, and I would get the 48 here, because that's going zero, one, two, three, four, five. There's my 48. I, I probably should have changed this two to a five so that the text is fine, but I'll just change this back to a two for when we go to uh, share this with you. Where this becomes really neat is that you can also tell Python to show you a subset of the array. Let's suppose, for example, you wanted Python to tell you items one, two, three, four, five, six, seven within the array. The way you do that is with a colon. The colon is an operator inside the array index there that just says go from the first one to the second one, but not inclusive, right? Here's what that means. So this is going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It actually shows you one through six. One, two, three, four, five, six. It never actually goes to the endpoint. If you wanted to put this in math terms, it looks like this. It's like going from item one to item seven. And you might remember this from maybe algebra two pre-calculus, whichever high school class that was, that this symbol indicates that you're going uh, that you do start at this endpoint, but this symbol indicates you approach but don't reach the second endpoint. So if you wanted items one through seven, uh, you would actually need to change this from a seven to an eight. We'll run that. And then this goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Lo and behold, I do get item number seven now. So here we take a look at what we might do with an array. We're gonna to return to our calculation of square root of two from Python tutorial one. Uh, you notice I have all the terms that we had before, right? We start with square root of C, then we do the first derivative, then we evaluate the second derivative, you'll add the term for the third derivative. But now what I'm doing, instead of just adding those directly and kind of losing all that individual information, I'm making each term an element in the array. So this is the first term, or I guess you should call it the zeroth term. It actually makes sense because this is the term number zero, and in the Taylor series it has the zeroth derivative. This is term number one in Python, and it has, it has the first derivative from the Taylor series. So it actually does make some mathematical sense to start counting at zero, because now the term number is the same thing as the derivative number, kind of makes sense. Uh, and But what I'm doing is I'm storing each of these terms separately in the array, 
right? So I have terms zero, terms one, terms two, right? So I take this entire array and I save it under the name terms. Now this looks a little bit funny here because I've actually broken this up over several different lines. If you have an incomplete line uh, in Python, meaning you've opened up a, a grouping thing, so maybe a parentheses, maybe a square bracket, it will keep reading on the next line. You can press enter and it will keep reading it on the next line until you get to the end of the groupings there. Very useful when you have a long string of stuff to put in and you want to break it up term by term. It's a very useful way to write this uh, in Python. And so in this case, the square root of x is going to be the sum of all these terms, right? It's going to be terms of 0 plus terms of 1 plus terms of 2. Now that's useful to me because maybe I want to add the first two terms. In that case, I can get rid of this piece and just add term 0 and term 1. There's my uh, first order approximation to square root of 2. And if I say, no, I really do need that second term, I can add it back. Press Control Enter. There's my second order approximation to square root of 2. So the next segment asks you to try out uh, a modification to that code above and add in the additional term. When you do that, you'll add the term here. Don't forget to add a comma at the end of the previous term because you notice that you need a comma after each element of the array up until the last one. So just make sure you add a comma there on the third line. The next segment talks about how you can use an array in a function. So NumPy has lots of built-in functions that are designed to process arrays. One of those is the average function. You can probably guess what that does. Uh, so we're going to call np.average of student heights. We're going to store that under the name average. And lo and behold, that gives me a 43.5, the average of this array. So you don't have to manually calculate the average. You can literally just dump whatever numbers you have into an array and ask for np.average, and it will calculate the average for you. There's a lot of other functions here that I'm going to let you learn about. One of the goals of these tutorials is to teach you how to learn about programming yourself. And the best way to do that is to just Google search the function that you're interested in using. Professional programmers do this all the time. We do not retain the definitions or the uh, syntax for each of these in our heads. We go and Google these things. So for example, np.lin, you can go and Google that to find out what it does when you add an array in here to the function. np.sum, you can probably guess what it does, but it's always nice to look up the documentation just to make sure you're using it appropriately. Same thing, np.prod, short for product. np.std there, uh, that should be familiar to you if you have worked in Excel. Uh, np.sign, np.exp, again, those are probably familiar looking, but I want you to take a look at how they affect the array. Because the nice thing about np.sign and np.exponential here is that they apply the function to the entire array. So you put in an array, and you get out an array where each element has been transformed by that function by itself. So rather than apply the same function to a bunch of different numbers over and over again, you can just put numbers into an array, put the array inside the function, and you get out an array. Let me give you an example of this. Let's suppose you wanted to get all the square numbers from 1 to 10. So you create an array called numbers, 1 through 10, and then you take numbers squared. Right, so the double asterisk here just means raised to the power of. Uh, this is useful because that operation is going to treat numbers like an array. Array goes in, array comes out. When you run this, you get out an array where each element of the first array has now become squared. Right, it takes that operation and applies it to each element inside the array. It's wonderful. Uh, but there's actually a more efficient way of doing this. Rather than list out all these numbers, you can get the computer to do this using a function called linspace. Uh, again, I'll let you Google what linspace does, but what you'll notice here is that when we go to print numbers, that looks like that array that we created up here. So linspace is a way for Python to automatically create an array for you. What we're doing is we're taking this, this long, laborious process and we're making it more and more efficient with each step. Uh, then there's a checkpoint that will ask you 
uh, you know, how would you change only one element of the array? I'll ask you to think back to the array indices. And then there's a section on common errors to watch for. This is an error I make all the time. So it's okay. And this is what the, the error message looks like for that. So I'll let you read about that error there. Then finally, there's a segment where you try. This is picking up where you left off in Python tutorial one. So at the end of tutorial one, you created a, a code snippet that would take a value of R and return a value of U, the gravitational potential energy for that center to center separation distance R. So now what you're gonna do, you're gonna paste your code into here and modify it to use array. So they have an entire array of values for R, produce an entire array of values for you.